and then of course as i mentioned i'm going berlin hopefully in a few weeks that should be fun um really really looking forward to it the plan is to go to Bergheim, of course the number one number one destination um there's been some really really conflicting and worrying stories about the queue times though i've heard people basically saying the standard time you have to wait is basically four hours unless you go right bang on you know 11 p.m on the saturday evening or something and wait you have to really go like you know you have to kind of wait four hours plus it just is what it is so the plan i might have to do because i'm gonna arrive a little bit earlier in the week is i might kind of try and get some partying in the partying out of the way on the thursday do a little bit of day drinking on the friday or evening drinking on a friday and then pop over to Bergheim just before it's about to open maybe 10 p.m 11 p.m right so yeah maybe if i yeah i think i'm meant to arrive like a tuesday or something like that right so obviously have time to kind of hang around do my thing and then when it approaches a friday pop over there before 12 maybe 11 maybe half 10 queue up and then go have a boogie dance and then maybe get a stamp and then because but then the issue with the stamp coming back i've heard is that supposedly if it's at capacity they don't even let you back in so it's not a guarantee that if you leave you can come back in which is a big issue and again considering the distance really it doesn't really make any sense to leave and then come back in really and you, know, you should really just stay um so let's see what happens let's see because i've got to meet a few people too got a couple of friends out there that i want to kind of hang out with people that i've kind of known from london who have basically moved over there and found a new life um there was a time when i wanted to move over there myself but i think uh, as the years have progressed and i've become a little bit more mature and my kind of going out requirements have kind of less centered around drinking and doing loads of drugs i've kind of felt like you know i don't really need to go there i don't really need to live there i can visit at least once a year which i was doing before covid i would go at least once a year sometimes twice i'd go maybe um in usually it was around this time as well around the winter times for whatever reason i've only been once during the summer fucking beautiful um i really regret not going more often now i understand why everybody basically um loves to go during the summer the summers are gorgeous the winters are horrible um it's so so cold Old, but i've heard that supposedly this year has not been too bad so that should be pretty cool to look forward to but yeah the plan was always moved there but i've kind of I've kind of been put off it by now um it's a great city don't get me wrong but i don't really want to get lost in the source and it's not really necessary um for what i want to do i can still kind of hustle do my thing eventually maybe get booked out there to play in some places later in the future and kind of travel back and forth and then the ultimate goal would be of course to have a place out there and maybe rent it out or something do you know what i mean um it's a bit more difficult to do now obviously with us not being in the eu and some change is happening over there as i've freaking noticed on airbnb the accommodation in berlin has completely changed um as it was you know a few years ago like it's really really thin on the ground in terms of actual good places you can kind of um rent um for your trip i think they had some law change in terms of basically not allowing people who weren't if i'm not mistaken it's not if you're not a citizen or you're not registered in germany you basically or berlin wherever you can't rent out a place on airbnb because i think beforehand people were basically taking advantage of that loophole and basically you know um make it basically getting like a long lease on a place so not even owning it and then just subletting it or sub renting it whatever that term is right to people um during you know and then kind of making loads of money that way and of course none of that money was funneling back into the german you know um economy loads of spaces and homes are basically occupied by people who are just tying them up in airbnb lots and people that live there couldn't actually get a hold of property because that's the one thing that's scarce in berlin right um properties people queue up and shit for interviews and you know you have to send flipping bios and answer questionnaires and play games and shit to win a spot to win a chance to rent a place is flipping it's like the it's like the apartment it's like the flat sharing version or flat hunting version of of the sneakers app do you know what i mean absolutely diabolical so that happens quite often over there so hopefully the plan again like i said um once the money starts rolling once i kind of start saving up in my other ventures that i'm kind of looking to explore go and need to go definitely end up getting a place out there but for now i really enjoy visiting you know it's an easy trip from london an hour and a half journey even with this new airport that they've got because i think they've closed the one that i usually go to which is um oh what's it called xcf or something that's that but it's changed now it's a new airport that they're meant to be built that's meant to be open for years ago but it's finally did open i think sometime at the beginning of last year so that should be pretty decent and even with that you know a train journey and i think all in all it's about two and a half hours door to door basically to leave here to go straight to berlin and kind of you know get in your main apartment which i usually get you know spaces in you know neuklon or prince lauberg or something like that in you know, somewhere central easy where i can kind of transcode i can kind of walk around to because i like to as well as, as good as the trains are over there and the tickets are fairly cheap i think it's like 16 euros or something for a week pass i do like to kind of walk around most places i go on holiday i like to kind of just you know 
get out there and just see Wagwan explore the streets and whatnot sometimes it can be a bit too crazy because other times i don't know why it is maybe because i'm used to london streets but sometimes foreign map especially when you load up the maps of another country on your phone it can sometimes be deceptive you can think a place is nearer than what it actually is and you end up walking and you figure out oh shit this is a half an hour walk this is an hour walk it's not 20 minutes not 10 minutes whereas everything in london's like 10 20 minutes away when you're looking at it from the map so that's usually a bit of a mind wobble in it but um the plan is again like i said to go to Bergheim on the Friday um, no on the Friday night hopefully get a stamp get a ticket um, see the guys dance around do the thing hunt 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 um, and then of course the other places I want to go check out is this place called Paloma uh, Paloma Bar which is in Copa Sator right under kind of roundabout as well I think it's a bit near the if I'm not mistaken it's near the Burgermeister if I'm not mistaken it's upstairs so as you can see from the picture there's like a river, river which is a supermarket and then next to it on the left hand side is a Burgermeister um, obviously the premier sort of like burger um, spot there in Berlin sort of similar to what we have here in terms of meat liquor and stuff and um, you know that sort of burger I think it's much nicer actually I think the meat's good and the bun's amazing and it's really good service and whatnot and they got cheesy fries so that's pretty nice so maybe I'll pop in there get something to eat then go to Paloma's which is kind of a housey disco -y type venue more so than a techno one I'd say it's yeah I'd say it's less techno and more so that kind of vibe it kind of reminds me a little bit of that place in um is it Munich um, is it Munich or Dortmund uh the place called um Salon des Amateurs right that place that they featured on a resident advisor a few years ago that everyone kind of raves about I never had a chance to go but it kind of reminds me of that like a kind of cool loungy bar um that obviously turns up later on in the night so that should be cool and it's got a cool entrance too it's like a little mesh gate you walk up some stairs you know what I mean security guard there whatnot so that should be awesome um going to go Palomas and then the other place I went to go visit was this place called Wild Renate um uh, but it's, it's listed as like Zur something else but I'm not sure if it is I think it's just called Wild Renate but if you want to know it as but it's a cool little space it's kind of like got an indoor space it's also got this weird outdoor space kind of like in the you know like an open air normally which they have over there in Berlin and then they have the DJ booth inside like a boat looking thing that's kind of in the middle and the dj sit down instead of standing up behind a booth so it lends for a really interesting um mix of people playing um a very eclectic choices of music um very interesting people in terms of performances you can see here there's loads of kind of um you know crazy interesting and just kind of you know unconventional performances more so than just a dj playing right there's always something kind of going on visually that you can kind of feast your eyes on but i really like how the dj booth is set up it, it really is awesome this is a picture from a lady called dj boney s on instagram so it's going to show you i think this is for their night called was it female pleasure but let's just double check here i think there was a video here from of the dj booth actually yeah, there you go. so it's all like a boat thing right that they put in the middle and you just play and they sit down vinyl or cdjs it's really cool man i'd love to play somewhere like this you basically have to play all day you know what i mean or you know mostly all day relaxed vibe people just drinking chilling hanging out having a bit of a good time having a boogie look at that look how cool that looks and you can ramp it up later on Not as, not as much black as you'd expect from like a techno club in like uh, Berlin. But again, I don't think it's a techno club, it's more free for you know I mean? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going to there. A couple more pictures, a couple more videos of people hanging around. Oh yeah, this is a performance there, obviously. Look how cool this looks. I love these kind of things that they have in Berlin, man. It's really awesome. They really take their um, clubbing culture seriously there. But yeah, look at that booth. That's fucking awesome, you know? That's a pretty sick booth, man. A little boat in the middle of a little open air. So definitely that's going to be one place I'm going to check out. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that and seeing the performances. Um, you know, gathering it all in, taking it in with the eyes and all that malarkey. You know, that good stuff. And then I'm also going to hopefully go to this venue called Same Heads, which is very kind of similar to a bar that we'd have here in london 
that we would have here in, here in London, which is ironic considering that, if I'm not mistaken, the founders of Same Heads are brothers who are English who moved over to Berlin years ago, maybe in the early 2000s or whatnot. And it's a very kind of, what do you call, how do you call it, um, multidiscipline or whatever. It's kind of a very versatile space. They have like fashion shows in here. They film things in here, live stream, of course. And then it's just like a classic club sort of vibe as well. So I'm really looking forward to going there. Um, it's really kind of weirdly um, decorated decorated loads of um, knickknacks everywhere um nothing kind of makes sense there is no rhyme or reason why things are where they are as you can see for the pictures here i'm showing you loads of interesting nights and as per usual with all these places in berlin there's not much of a lit oh this i think this guy on the left was on horror right i forgot his name he's a dj what's his name here uh yeah that's him Loves that love fist tears i'm pretty sure i saw him play on the whore once but yeah um the good thing about the one of the good things about these places as well is that there's no real kind of program you can kind of see ahead of time. I'm going to miss out on this festival, actually, I think there's no real program you can see ahead of time. You're going to just have to wait. You kind of just, just go and just hope it's a good night. And usually def, usually it is. You don't really have to kind of um, hope too much or get too you know, worried about your nights out, which is something you can kind of um you know it's something cool to kind of like keep off your mind so you're not having to worry about oh well, this person playing have i got a ticket generally if you kind of like the space and you want to go just check it out and usually it's going to be a pretty decent night let's see if i can find a video of somebody recorded recently see what it looks like on the inside yep, it's from september 19th let's see this this is from kinzo chrome but look how fun that looks a lot of italo house here italo disco sorry Cool little small spot, probably fits about 300 people maximum being there. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to go in there, man. I'm really fucking looking forward to going here. So yeah, I'm gonna go same heads. And then lastly, but not least, the other piece of resistance, my one of my most favorite bars and a bar that I've had a lot of kind of interesting experiences with uh, <laughs> members of the opposite sex in my time has been Roses. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite bars in Berlin. Um, I've just had some, again, like I said, some great memories at this place. It's essentially a gay queer bar, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, great interiors kind of laced with all this plush red velvet on the walls weird little nooks knickknacks everywhere um and just generally a great vibe i don't think they have a dj just have somebody playing the playlist online or you know behind the bar the bar is great good drinks all this good stuff and people just get crazy you know i mean as you can see via this picture i don't want to get taken off on my youtube but you can see people just get nuts they get loose they enjoy themselves, they get sparkly. And again, it's a it's a refreshing sort of uh rest it's a refreshing sort of respite from the dreary blackness of most of the techno clubs that obviously reside in Berlin. Number one being Bergheim, Germany. You only have to look at the queue at the Bergheim to see how many people arrive there wearing exactly all black, exactly the same outfit, exactly the same faces, exactly the same earplugs. So it's quite refreshing to see a very bright, sparkly lit kind of club. Um, that doesn't necessarily play the same music as every other venue so I'm a big fan of it so I really really cannot wait to get back in there again one of my favorite spots to go out there in Berlin if you're not really a fan of checking out most of the bird you know the techno techno kind of spaces I definitely recommend it again great drinks open till late if I'm not mistaken and just kind of a great vibe overall so that's the kind of venues that I'm going to be reaching when i visit berlin in a few weeks and i honestly honestly i'm so excited the only thing again like i said i'm nervous about is just the wait time in Berlin. i think i've told myself if i have to wait more than two and a half hours three hours i'm just going to leave and go somewhere else i love the place but it's not worth it to stay that long in the queue and obviously with the resource like um there's an account what's it called in case you want to know as well if you want to go there's an account on instagram that basically uploads videos over the weekend of people sending in clips of what the queue looks like so you can kind of judge when you should go obviously you should make your own plans and not wait for somebody to upload something all right because obviously it might be too late but um let me see if i can find it bear with me one second da, 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 da. there we go Bergine. What is it called? It's called something. 
yeah, it's what it's called um Berghain Line Live Berghain Line Live. It's all one word. Um it's a really good account. Definitely make sure you follow it. They upload mostly on stories, never on the main feed, unless it's like an announcement thing, but um usually upload on the story, so obviously it disappears over time, so you know, there's no record of it and shit, I'm assuming. But definitely check it out. They upload all the you know, people send them DMs of the queue and show them what the queue is like so you can kind of find out what's going on. So those are my plans, man. I'm really, really looking forward to it. As you can tell, I'm super excited and I'm training my else off to run loads so i can be fit enough to you know stay on the dance for hours and hours and to make sure that i can fit into my subies and my recommends you know you know the vibes you know the vibes